Hi, thanks for joining me. This is Angie at Chicken Scratch, and this is the very first video for the Raw Edges Square Quilt. Okay, so we're going to be using a layer cake, a charm pack, and a mini charm pack, all of the same fabric, okay? So what we're going to do is, we're not even going to touch the layer cake yet. We're going to decide which square we like best on each of our square. So you could start at the back, and you could place it out just like that. And what I did is I just put these on my kitchen table. I put all 40 out and I just put my square inside. So that's the first thing we're going to do is decide our squares that's going to go on our square. So you're not going to touch the layer cake just yet. So just set that aside. Now before I decide these, um, I want to show you this quilt so that you can make sure that you want to make this one. Not all quilters are fan of raw edges. My very first quilt, in fact my first several quilts were raw edges. It was the flower quilt and then the butterfly. And I absolutely love the raw edges. And I can't take credit for this design. I'll make sure I link um, to the person that actually uh, made this quilt. She did make it a little differently. She used a jelly roll and I'm using the mini charm. But there weren't many charms back, I think, when she designed this quilt. So anyway, this is not my creation, but it is, it, I am, I have used or done a lot of raw edge quilts, and I love, and as you wash it, it will get even softer and scrufflier, okay? So I'm going to pause the camera, and when I come back, I will have decided all of my, um, how I'm going to place my little charms on here. Oh, let me back up for just a second, and I want to show you. On my original one that I made, I took my mini charm square, and I also made it my layer cake. So that way I didn't have to guess a whole lot, but it doesn't give me enough, I don't know, variance in color. So I am not going to do that this time. If you prefer, I will tell you it's a whole lot easier, because all you got to do is decide your mini charm, which five inch square you're going to put it on and then you choose the same layer cake to go under there but i'm going to try to mix mine up a lot more because there's a lot of colors in in this um uh, this pattern that i chose okay so i will see you in a little bit okay so i have got all of my mini charms placed on top of my charm and now what i'm going to do is take it over to my table and i'm going to glue the mini charm on top of the charm, so I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so what I've done is placed a post-it note on the first block of every row. I am going vertically, not horizontal. So, I don't know if I can find my first one. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and start gluing. We'll find that second row in just a minute. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to take this square and I'm only going to apply glue to the inside piece or to the inside, not around the edges. And then I'm just going to place it right in the middle. Now, if you want it to be exact, then you could measure it with a ruler. I'm going to turn this upside down because I do want to keep these in order. I kind of fiddled with it long enough that um, I kind of like the pattern I have going. So, we still have to attach these to our layer cakes, but, um, and that could change um, how I have it positioned, but for now, I'm liking how it looks. So this is our last block on row one, vertical rows. So I will see you at the sewing machine. Okay, so I have got row one here, and I'm going to just set my entire stack over here. I'm going to start with the first one, and all I'm going to do is sew a quarter inch seam around the entire square. I also want to make sure that I keep my needle down so that I can pivot when I get to the end. And I'm not going to the end. I'm just kind of eyeballing about a quarter of an inch and then I'm gonna pivot. 
and you can see I kind of fell short on that one because I was too busy um, talking. I'll do a little bit better on this one. And it doesn't have to be exact because these are going to be raw edges. So this quarter inch seam is really going to be covered up by the raw edges. And I just went over a little bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. One more stitch. Okay, so now I'm going to raise my foot. Well, there we go. And I'm just going to pull it back just a tad. And then I'm going to take the next square. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I want to make sure that I pull this one out enough that it doesn't actually get sewn onto this one. I have accidentally done that before, so um, just be mindful of that. Okay, so I'm going to do this entire first row just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Again, I want to put that needle in the down position. I tell everyone, I think I meditate when I do this part. I've done a lot of uh, raw edges quilts, so um, yeah, I meditate, I think. <laughs> okay. Now, I know this seems like it's getting all twisted, but um, let me show you just a second. Okay, so this is the first one. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and stick my post-it note back on there. It's really not going to get mixed up because this is one, this is two, and the next one I'm about to do is going to be three. But if you were to get up and go somewhere and then come back, you might forget where you were. So it's a good thing to just put that post-it note back on there. Same thing, lift my needle, pull it back, and you don't have to do this chain stitching if you want to just cut the thread. If you have an automatic thread cutter, that's one of the things that um, this machine does not have, but one of my other ones does, and I am a huge fan of an automatic thread cutter. Um, yeah, but this one... I love the sound of the sewing. I love how it sews. So I always gravitate towards the Bernina. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of the very first row. Now I'm just going to separate these. So I'm just going to snip these threads. Okay, got that turned around for a second. Hopefully this is all in the camera. Okay, so this is my first row, and I've lost my post-it note, but it is the first row. It's back there somewhere. Okay, so now I'm going to end this video at this point. This is the end of video number one, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and sew all of my mini charms on top of my five-inch uh, charms, and then the next video, we're actually going to place this on our layer cake and decide our pattern uh, for that. Okay? Okay, so I've opened up the layer cake and I have positioned it on my wall exactly how I want it. And now the next step is I'm going to go get my charm squares and I'm going to place them on here. So I'll be back in just a minute with all the charm squares in place. Okay, so I have placed all of my charm squares on my layer cake squares, and um, I think it looks pretty good. I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it. I think it's going to look good regardless of what position those squares are in. Okay, I'm going to zoom in for you to see the top row. Okay, so on the far left, you see row one. We're sewing these in vertical rows, so that's one, two, three, and then four, five, six. So at six across and seven down, so I'm going to pause the camera. Okay, so I've got all of my charm squares on top of my layer cake pieces. And now we want to do the same thing. We want to take our glue stick and we want to glue these down because we want to sew a quarter inch seam around these. 
So what I'm going to do is take my first one. Now, normally I just take my glue stick, I put it on the back, and then I slap it on anywhere. If you want yours to be exactly in the square, because this is a um, this is a square, and for some people it might um, be aggravating for it to be a little crooked. There is this awesome ruler. What is it called? Five and Dime. I'll make sure on my Angie Judah site that I have the official name of it. Um, it is by Kansas Troubles Quilters. Anyway, the link will be on my site. So this is made specifically for a layer cake. So what you're going to do is place it right there. And then this is going to show you exactly where to position your charm square. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this over and put some glue on the back. Now I had um, someone ask about the glue that if over time uh, would the glue wash out. Probably so. I think so. But we're going to be stitching a quarter inch seam around the edge and then we're going to be quilting this or my long arm quilter will be. So I think that it's going to be, I've made lots of um, of these quilts and so far none of my butterflies or um, flowers or any of those have come off. Now I'm going to use this ruler one more time and then I'm going to put it away because to be honest I'm really okay if it's not straight. Okay, so I've gotten to a point where I'm going to pause the camera, and when I come back, we're going to sew our quarter inch seam around the edge of this charm square. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, so I've got the first square of row one, and all I'm going to do is sew a quarter inch seam down this charm square. So I'm just going to lift my foot up and place it here. Okay, and then I'm just going to start sewing. Make sure your needle is in the down position. When you get about a quarter of the way up, um, you're going to pivot. That's why you want to keep the needle down. Again, I'm going to turn. I'm going to take my pen out for a second because I, I do not want to sew over that. Okay, so now we get to where we started and someone asked a really good question about back stitching. Do you back stitch or do you not back stitch? For these larger squares, you can definitely sew right back over where you started. In fact, let me remove this and I'll show you. Okay, I don't know if you can see. I just went right back over the where I started. So sometimes you can just start about right here and then that way you'll see exactly where to go. Um, okay, so I'm going to pin, pin my number one back on here because I don't want to get confused. I'm going to pick up the next square. I'm going to show you one more and then I will um, end this video number two and our third video uh, we will start sewing our rows together. So the only thing left really is just to sew all of our squares on and then we can start sewing our rows. So this is one of those quilts that you can make really in a day. In fact my last one I did. <laughs> Okay, so I'll be back when we're ready to sew our rows together. If you have any questions, be sure to join our Chicken Scratch Quilt Along Facebook group. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye. And this is the third video for the Raw Edges Square Quilt Quilt Along. Okay, so now we're ready to um, sew our blocks together or sew row one. We're going vertically. Um, my last video, we were sewing around our charm square. 
So the next thing we want to do is just make sure that all of our blocks are going in the same direction. We're talking about the grain of fabric. So when I pop it like that, it's nice and solid. Over here, it's kind of a dull and it's really stretchy. So this is the top and I want to make sure that every one of my blocks do the exact same thing. And what this does is it helps you to make sure that your um, seams line up better because the other side stretches. So if it stretches, then that means it's not going to line up as nice because it's going to stretch when you start sewing it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is pause the video and we will head over to the sewing machine. Okay. Okay, so now we're at the sewing machine. I've got my stack of row one. So I'm going to set my squares over here to the side. I've got block one and block two. So I'm just going to flip over block two, place these right sides together, and then I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam. So I'm just going to place this here on my sewing machine. I am going to back stitch for this point or for this spot, I should say. Along the way, I just want to make sure that I've kept the square straight, both of them together. Okay, so now that one is connected to two, I'm going to pick up the third block. And at this point, I'm going to also make sure that I've not moved it and then my grain of fabric is still going in the right direction. And if you guys have any questions about that, just be sure to post it on our Chicken Scratch uh, Quilt Along Facebook page. Okay, I can see I'm not straight down here, so now it is. Okay, so I'm going to finish sewing row one together, and then what we're going to do is press our seams. Uh, so I'm going to pause the video, get this wrapped up, and then we'll press our seams, okay? Okay, I have sewn my entire row one together, and now we're ready to press our seams. Now, in the past, I have always pressed my seams either to the left or to the right or to the dark side. I am actually going to try something new with this quilt. I don't know how I'm going to like it, but, you know, you never know until you try something. So I've had people swear by it, and then other people hate it. Um, and I have really Googled the subject a lot, and there is a lot of mixed emotions about it. So anyway, I'm going to press my seams open. And if it doesn't work out, it'll be okay. We can fix it. I say with paper crafting and with sewing, you can fix anything. Um, okay, so I've pressed that seam open. Now I'm going to slide down. I think um, when I was reading... Um, when I googled the subject, some people said they did not like it because um, it wasn't as strong of a seam. Um, and yeah, I don't really want my seams to open up, but I also don't want it to be bulky in the middle. And since I'm about to start doing my own quilting, I got a mid-arm machine. Um, I'm going to need all the help I can get with not having bulky fabric. So in the next quilt along, you may see me go back to uh, pressing the seams to the left or to the right. Okay, so I don't think I need you, uh, or I need to show you all of this because this is just row one. And then next I'm gonna go get row two. And then um, once we get this done, we're almost done. All we have to do is sew our rows together so we'll we'll connect row one to row two and then what I'll do is I'll connect row three to row four and then five to row six and then I will take those 
pairs and sew them together. So I'm going to pause the camera and um, I'll be back with uh, connecting row one to row two. Okay. Okay, so I'm back. I just got done pressing all of my seams. And now what we're going to do is take row two and we're going to turn it. Let me open up row one. Okay, so that's row one. Here's row two. So I'm just going to flip this over and place them right sides together, just like that. And I'm going to pin them. So uh, we never know when um, beginner sewers or quilters join us. So I'm going to try to remember to not skip any steps. So I've shown this in every quilt along. I'm going to show it in this one as well. I do like to pin, start pinning in the middle. And I want to line up my seams. So I've got my pins here. I do tend to over pin. And I say that in every video as well. Um, because I would rather be safe than sorry. Maybe in 10 years or 5 years I may stop pinning. Um, so now that I've got that first one there, I'm going, going to slide down to the next seam and pin it. And let's see. I don't want to stick my head in the camera, but I also want to make sure, and I can tell that one's not straight. Okay, I also, when I get to the sewing machine, I, I, I try to make sure that they're still lining up. My sister doesn't pin when she sews, and um, man, I can't believe that, that her uh, her seams turn out okay. Okay, so this is nice. My right side here lined up perfectly. I might even go in here and even put a pin in the middle there, because like I said, um, I'm an over pinner. So now we're going to just fold this together. Let me get this middle one. And then now we're going to work to the left. So, okay, so now I'm going to pin this one. Okay. Then this last one here. This is technically our first one since we started in the middle and worked our way down. And then now here's our first one. And I do actually pin it as well. Okay, so I will see you at the sewing machine. Okay, so I have got row one and row two pinned together and now we are ready to start sewing. So I'm just going to take this first pin out and make sure that I still have my fabric lined up. I am going to back stitch even though people swear I don't have to. Okay, so just going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way to the end. When I get to a seam, I am going to make sure that it's still lined up. I'm going to put my needle down because I don't want my fabric to shift at all as I'm checking the seam. And that one looks pretty good. So I am going to remove the pin now and I'm going to go slow so that my seam continues to lie flat. Okay, so in the last video, I sewed row two to row one, and so that, that's complete. And then behind the scenes, I went ahead and sewed row three to row four, and then row five to row six. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm not actually going to film that part because you've already seen all the steps, but I'm just going to tell them to you, is I'm going to sew um, row three. <laughs> To row two, where is it? Here it is. I lost my post-it note. So I'm going to sew three to two and then five to four. Okay, so I'm going to do that really quick and then I will come back. And Okay, so I have got all of my rows sewn together 
and I'm being gentle with this because I do not want to poke myself with those pins. Um, okay, here's the top of the quilt. So I can now remove my post-it notes. That's row six. And I actually saved these so I can use them again. If you look real close, you can see a few um, indentations in there where I've used them before. Except I lost my number three, or two. Okay, this one's been used a lot. Okay, so let me get these out of the way. Now, what you want to do is check your seams for any holes. And um, it's been a while, I think, since I... I've, I've had a hole in the middle of my quilt, but I will tell you, I have done it a lot, especially if you are if you sew for a while and then you leave and you come back. Um, things happen. So anyway, I check every single seam and make sure there's no holes. Um, and then I also press all the seams. And now normally I press the seams, um, so when I sewed uh, row two to row three, I would have normally pressed um, the seams open before I attached row three to row two. So hopefully that makes sense. But I didn't do it this time because I'm kind of in a hurry to get this wrapped up. So what I'll do now is take this to my iron and I'm going to press all of my seams and I will starch it and give it to my long arm quilter. So I'm going to fold this up really quick and oh and one other thing before I fold it up is I want to trim all my extra threads. Um, and I do that on the ends, on the little squares in here. Just get rid of all these extra threads. Okay, so I think it turned out beautiful. Um, I can't wait to see it after it's been quilted. Um, okay, so we're going to measure this to determine our backing fabric. Now, before we started this, I went ahead and gave you some measurements that's based off of what my long arm quilter needs. Um, now that I have a mid arm machine, I actually need more fabric than what my long arm quilter needed. So I'm probably still going to have her do this quilt because I only bought uh, four and a half yards and with my mid arm machine I need four and three quarters because we need I need eight inches on each side. Anyway, that's okay. Okay, so we're going to measure the width first. I'm going to start here at the end and try to gracefully go across. This is really one of those quilts that you can pretty much knock out in a day. It's taken me a couple weeks to film the video, but that's just because I had a gazillion other things going on. Okay, so it almost measures 58 inches. So I'm going to measure 58 for the width. And now we're going to measure the length. I know you're probably wondering, why did I fold this up when I've got to unfold it? Okay, so at the end... Almost there. It's easier standing up doing this. Okay. So, 69. Where's my pen? 69. Okay, let's get out my phone real quick. Okay, I've got my iPhone here, and we're going to be opening up my quilting calculator by Robert Kaufman. And um, if you don't have an iPhone, just find a quilting calculator online, okay? So we're going to click on backing and batting. Now, my long arm quilter provides the batting, um, so I'm going to click on that. Uh, the width of the fabric is 43 inches, so that's the standard fabric. So the width of my quilt is 58 by 69 
My long arm quilter needs two inches for overage, so we're gonna calculate this for her right now, and then we'll go back and do my measurements. So that tells me that I need uh, four and an eighth yards for backing. Sorry, my handwriting's awful. It's chicken scratch. And then now we're gonna go back to the binding and my long arm quilter uses um, two inches. So the width is 58, the length is 69. She does the bias binding, calculate, and she needs a half a yard for binding. So that's how I always determine it. Now, let's go back because I've just purchased a, a mid arm machine and I've not used it yet. Um, I hope too soon. So 58 by 69. I'm going to put Angie. And let's see what I need with uh, 8 inches of overage. So 58 by 69. And the overage is going to be 8 inches. Yeah, and I need 4 and 3 quarter yards for the backing and the binding stays the same yeah because there's no because the I'm going to do the same the two inch uh, binding so still a half a yard for binding okay so that wraps up this quilt along um, I anticipate it's going to be a few months before I get this back um, I'm going to take it to the long arm quilter and have it quilted if you want to see what the finished product looks like uh, the pictures of my previous uh, raw edges quilt is on my uh, Facebook group and on my Angie Judah site Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye